Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Let's seek the truth and travel the long road to justice together. What you know, alibiers? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Good to have you here. Not sure if you guys are going to get this on Wednesday or Thursday, but I hope you've had a good day or you're having a good morning, whichever. Before we get started, you know the drill. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, share it with your friends, and you can ring my bell if you want notifications of when I post new content. I really appreciate all y'all subscribing. It means a lot. Music fact of the day, my favorite band ever, Pink Floyd's Delicate Sound of Thunder became the first rock album to be played in space. You guys know I'm a big space nerd and a big Pink Floyd nerd, so that was like the perfect marriage. Got my Pink Floyd shirt on. I have 78 Pink Floyd shirts, and I have over a 1,000 T-shirts in my collection. Everywhere I go, get one. Yesterday, they started playing this really lengthy interview that Hannah gave on November 9th of 2021. So not too long after the shooting, that was October 21st, she had her attorney with her. They asked how she's been. She said she's been busy and depressed. And she talks about how there's been a lot of press about the shooting, a lot of hatred, a lot of people telling her to go harm herself. And she says people are horrible. They ask about any official training that she's done, and she said not much. She said she was planning to get her concealed carry permit, but she hasn't got there yet. They talk about her duties as an armorer. We've been through all that with her. It's very repetitive. But they do ask if her job requires any kind of certification, and she says she doesn't know. She said most of the jobs she's got have been through word of mouth, and also her dad helps her as well as Seth. She said that she is on Seth's license to be able to do this work, and so is Sarah. She said people really don't ask about that. She's talked about trying to get into the union, but she was not in the union when she started working on Rust. She was hired to do armor and props, but after the first week, she was told she wasn't pulling her weight in props, and was told to shift her focus more on the props. She said they told her, we hear you're taking your armor job very seriously, but we need you to support props right now. She explains when she's doing props, for instance, in a saloon scene, she might be watching over the guns, and then for the prop side, she might pour drinks into prop glasses, run outside, roll cowboy cigarettes, doing several things, grabbing props, setting them up. She said that both her and Sarah were hired only a week before production began. Typically, you would hire your props master about a month out. So Sarah was offset a lot trying to run down props that are very specific to the time period that they're doing in this movie. They ended up hiring somebody to assist with the running so Sarah could be on set more. Hannah said she got to do two jobs for less pay. She said they told her, you can do this. And she said, well, okay, I have to show them I can do this. But she talks about struggling with both jobs. She said she has a strong personality compared to Sarah, and in return, she was already getting a lot of respect on the set. She said as far as the hiring process in the industry, it's not like a typical go in and have an interview. It's really a word of mouth and who you know kind of industry. As far as the ammunition, her and Sarah both went to Albuquerque to get boxes of ammunition, the weapons, and leathers from Seth. She thinks the day they first went, they got two boxes of ammunition. And occasionally they would text him that they needed more and Sarah would be in charge of getting those. She talks about going through bags of dummies to look for 45 long Colt rounds. Seth told her to check her bag from the last set she was on. She said that the rounds were in her car for two weeks. The guns were in Sarah's car because they hadn't brought the truck that held the props to the set yet. Then she says it was only for one night and Sarah had a garage, so that's why she let her hold the guns. Hannah talks about supplying her own dummies on the set. She said the prop truck would stay unlocked during the day because they were just running in and out of there. She mentioned something about the safe. You just turned the knob to open it. And then she said the rounds were left out in the open. She said the only people that had access to the guns were Sarah and herself. Sometimes Sarah would put those guns away for her. She talks about loading up the gun belts with ammunition. She said her, Sarah, and another props assistant named Nicole would shake the rounds to make sure they were dummies. Some of the ammo in the belts were left over from that previous job she did. And she talked about how sometimes the rounds would fall out of the belts when the characters were riding horses. She said she physically removed the rounds from the gun belt to check them. And if you remember, there was a live round in Jensen Ackles' gun belt. When the ammo is not being used, she would put it on the bottom of the cart if they were going to use it later in the day. 
And even if they weren't planning to do any scenes that day that required guns, she would always bring ammo with her just in case somebody changed their mind and they ended up shooting a scene with guns. Once the rounds are put in the gun belts, they typically don't take them out. At the end of the day, they would just hang them in the prop truck. She talks about how some of the actors on the set wanted to self-check their weapons, and if they didn't know how to, she would show them. She mentions all the people that did their own safety checks, such as Jensen Ackles. Now, in Jensen's police interview, he talks about this, and he says he does it because ultimately it falls on him. He's very knowledgeable with guns. Other cast members also would do those self-checks. She would teach him how to look at the barrel, open the cylinder and spin it. They would pull back the hammer. If she gives an actor a weapon with dummies, she will open that cylinder to show they are dummies because they have no primer cap. She's asked if she ever allowed anyone to handle the weapons when they're not being used in a scene, and she says no. Now, in Jensen's interview, he sort of insinuates maybe there was some horseplay on set with those guns. He talks about other armorers he's worked with, and they're very serious like a drill sergeant. And that stuck with him throughout his career, just making sure he's triple safe. They ask about the Monday before the incident, and Hannah says the incident was on the 20th. The investigator corrects her and says the 21st. Hannah talks about there are times when the blanks don't fire, and a lot of times it's because the actor doesn't pull the hammer back all the way. She says to save face for the actor, she may say it misfired instead of embarrassing the actor and saying they didn't pull that hammer back. If she does have a defective round, she'll put them in her pocket Later on, if she's curious, she may shoot them to see if the projectile had a problem or was it the actor. Sometimes she will inspect that round to see if it was just bad. She says, I'm shaking all of them most of the time. She goes through all the different rounds they use and how they work. Some of the rounds are just not as loud as the bigger ones. She talks about training with the different loads, which essentially is how much sound they make. She says Alec Baldwin wanted full loads. It produces more smoke and it just looks more realistic. As far as safety meetings, they had a couple, and most days they didn't have any. They would have been hosted by Dave. She also says she makes sure to tell the actors, don't touch a gun. If you see one laying around, leave it be. They talk about safety training with Hannah on set. She said bigger actors typically don't care to do it. She said Alec was on his phone a lot when they had their safety training. And normally she trains one-on-one, -on -one, but they were giving her three at a time. Sometimes there were also producers there. And that total could be up to 10 people when normally she would be doing that one-on-one. -on -one. For scenes, she would teach them how to pull the gun out, keep your finger out of the trigger guard unless you're ready to shoot. She explains what show and tell is, which is where the cast comes and looks at all of the firearms and they're laid out on tables for them to see. They move into the misfire that happened on set. That was October 17th and within an hour of each other. Hannah said she went to the bathroom, and she said it was the first time she was able to step off set in a while. She hears screaming in her earpiece, and Dave tells everyone, it's okay, it's just a misfire. Hannah ran out of the bathroom to the set. She was just trying to figure out what happened. She found out that's when Sarah accidentally fired the gun. Hannah took over loading that firearm, and then she talked to Sarah about the discharge. Sarah said it happened while she was loading the gun. Hannah told her to put her thumb all the way over the trigger, and then she says, I mean, not the trigger, the hammer. Otherwise, if you don't pull it all the way, your hands will be sweaty sometimes and it'll slip. She wasn't exactly sure what happened, but guns don't just go off like that, and most likely it's because you made a mistake loading it and the hammer came down too quickly. She said that happens a lot if you're in a rush. It hasn't happened to her, but she can understand that happening. They hear the next discharge. She goes to find out what happened, and the actor said it just went off. And Hannah said, that's a lever action rifle. That's not how it works. She said the actor was a little ticked at her, and she just told him to be careful. She said on the day of the discharges, she was butting heads with Sarah a bit, and Hannah said she was furious, like Hannah herself was furious. She said she was getting heckled by the stuntmen at that point, and they needed to talk to production about what happened because people were going to be mad that it happened. She said Sarah was embarrassed and shaking, and she really wasn't responding to Hannah much. She said Sarah pointed out that Hannah's gun went off as well, and Hannah told her, I can't be responsible for every stunt guy that gets a hold of a gun and doesn't understand the concept that it's a hot gun. Hannah said Sarah texted Seth about it because she was angry. In return, Seth texted Hannah and said, accidents happen, you need to get over it. Hannah texted Sarah and apologized and said she wasn't trying to start problems, but thought they should tell production. 
and said she wouldn't be surprised if they both got fired for that. Sarah told Hannah she had contacted the producers already, and she said nobody from production talked to them about those discharges. Hannah said she didn't take the guns away from Sarah because Sarah was her boss. They asked if anybody drank or did drugs. She said they all did go out one time and had a few drinks, and Hannah said she smoked marijuana on her days off. They talk about the day of the incident and ask where she pulled the box of dummies from. Hannah said that box was kind of peculiar now that she's thought about it a little more. She said they had been looking for the 45 long cult dummies, and they didn't have a lot of them because they used most, if not all, of the ones she brought in the very beginning. They had to order some 4440s. They're a similar size. They did get some 45 long colts a little before that, and they pretty much put all those in the actor's gun belts. She said this box she hadn't been aware of. It was just sitting right next to her safe on this extra bag. She brings it to carry guns in. So now she's talking about this mystery box she sees just sitting on her bag. I thought that was interesting. She said, looking back now, it was just sitting on top of my stuff. The prop truck had been moved over the weekend, and she doesn't know how easily that box would have stayed up there on that bag. The box just said the word dummies on it from what she could remember, and it wasn't in the regular font. She said to Nicole that she wonders if that box was there the entire time because they've been needing them. Hannah said, well, at least we have them now. So she put them on her cart and they went out with those rounds. As she picked them up, they were making the noise. So she thought they were dummies. She's asked if she saw the box prior to that. And she said she hadn't really noticed the box before then. It didn't have the caliber on it, but believes the other side may have said long colt. Before they moved to the church set, none of the guns were dummied up because the shot was so wide and it wouldn't have made a difference. Once they got to the church, they dummied up the guns. They were shaking the rounds and checking them as they loaded them into the firearms. And for Alex's gun, she used four projectiles without the primer cap. She had those in her pocket. And then she grabbed some dummies from that box that we just talked about. She's walking into the church with Alex's belt, holding the four no primer cap projectiles and then some extra ones too. She looked in her hand and noticed there was one with a hole in the side. Then she loaded one that didn't fit. She showed Dave and Alec and put the gun on the prop cart. As they were getting ready to break for lunch, they put the sock covers over the guns and did not unload them. They were putting the gun safe by Sarah, she thinks. After lunch, they got the guns back out of the safe and she's asked if they ever reopened the guns. She said she's not too sure and then she says, I reopened the rust gun because she remembered it was dirty and needed to be cleaned. They were about to start that shootout scene. After cleaning, she takes the dummy round out of the box and shakes it. Dave comes over the radio saying they need the gun in there. She shakes the round and puts it in as she's walking towards the set. She showed Dave the cylinder, told him it's dummied up. While she's telling him this, he's talking to Elena and Joel. Dave tells her just to hand him the gun. The witness asks if it's her responsibility to check the guns after they come back out. She said it's her responsibility to check them into the actor as they're given out. She wouldn't really check it unless it was going to set, but it went to set and then she checked it with Dave. She also did a barrel obstruction check. And while the round isn't in there, she can pull that hammer back and look a little ways down the barrel. She didn't see anything. She said the last round she pulled out of the box looked like a dummy that did not have a hole in the side. Four had the depressed primers and two did not. They ask how she would say a live round got in that box. And Hannah says she isn't sure if someone put a live round in there. But she checked those to the best of her ability and was walking into the church and was shaking it in her ear and thought she heard a shake. They ask when someone would have had the opportunity to put a live round in. She said she isn't sure because Alec had the gun on his person most of the day. If it wasn't on him, it was on the top of the cart. There's times where she would go to the bathroom and tell the girls to watch the cart, but sometimes the girls would get distracted by the actors. The investigator says she's missing the question, how did the live round get in the box? Hannah said the box was sitting out all day, and when she picked it up, it jingled. So to her, that meant the whole box was dummies. You still check every one for the audible sound. She said someone could have possibly done something at lunch or the box already had a live round in it. 
She isn't sure when it could have gotten in there, and it could have been in there from the beginning. The prop cart was in the same spot during lunch, and she said she was kind of behind this black tent with it because she didn't want anybody touching it. The prop truck usually stays put, and the reason they keep a lot of stuff on their person is because the truck's pretty far away. They don't want to bring the prop cart by the truck, so that's why they stay near that tent. At night, the cart goes inside the truck. On the day of the shooting, she said she was bickering with the stunt double because they wanted to shoot two pistols in front of the camera before every scene to make smoke. Hannah said that's extremely uncommon. She brought a shotgun in case they wanted to do just one big one. The director wanted that and pushed for it, so they brought the rust gun, a wood pistol, a drum pistol, and then that shotgun. She brought those immediately to the set, and then she had to go use the restroom. She had not given Dave the gun at this point. No one had asked for it, and the gun in the box was supposed to be on the cart. She told Sarah and Nicole as well. She said Sarah was flirting with Jensen and was close to the cart. She didn't know if Nicole was there. She doesn't think anybody went back to the truck for anything. After she cleaned the gun, which she said took around five minutes, she thought it was weird that they immediately needed the gun in there that quickly after lunch because normally it takes a while for the cameras and everything to get set up. But back to walking the gun in, Dave was sitting in the pew where Rust would sit, and then she was going to go back in when Alec got there, but she said nobody called to tell her that he had arrived on set. She walked in with the gun open because she had just loaded that last round, and the check consisted of her spinning the cylinder for Dave and telling him it was dummied up. After the handoff, she goes outside because they're about to start filming, and she was getting her stuff ready for the big shootout scene, getting her fanny pack filled up, lining her pockets with blanks, and she says she has a pocket system where she separates them. She was worried about Alex cross draw because he hadn't trained that much. She texted his assistant the night before to make sure he was comfortable. The assistant said he was fine. After her and Sarah heard the gunshot inside the church, Sarah asked if that was the gun. Hannah said it can't be the gun. Then she hears in the earpiece, set medic emergency. That was Jensen calling the emergency. Hannah thought it was a popper that had blown somebody's arm off or something. She said, but I look in and I see people on the ground and I thought, oh my God. She asked, was it the gun? And they said, yes. She goes inside. She screams. They yell at her and she walks out and asks for the gun. And Dave brought it to her. She said, everyone's staring and looking at me at this point. Walking in and seeing that was super awful. She takes all the rounds out and the first round had been discharged. She said, like I told you, it could be one of the older dummies. But it could have been a live round, and once you showed me what they pulled out of Joel, it seems more like a live round, but the other five I pulled out were all dummies. In that first interview we went over yesterday, by the way, she said it looked like a dummy or a blank. I can't remember, but she didn't think it was live at that point. She emptied the rounds into her hands and then handed them to Sarah and told Sarah to check the box that she got the rounds from. Hannah kept the gun in her waistband. The witness asked Hannah if she checked the box. Hannah said she did not check that box after the shooting. She said she was freaking out. Her boss came over and took her a little further away because people were staring at her. A little later, Sarah came up to her and Hannah asked if she checked the box. Sarah said, yeah, there were some bad ones in there. And she said she didn't know what Sarah meant by that. She thought maybe one or two. A few days later, Sarah came to her hotel room to check on her. This was after a vigil for Helena. Hannah said she can't believe somehow there were some bad ones in that box. Sarah told her half the box was bad, and Hannah said it was safe to assume bad meant live. They ask if it's common for her to keep dummies in her pocket. She said yes, and her dad keeps some of his favorites in his pocket. She keeps five or six in there typically. Those came from her old boxes, and she had used them the weekend before. Those didn't have primer caps. They pointed out she had more on her person than that when she did her first interview. And she said, I think I found some more and put them in there just in case. The reason she pulled from the box is because she forgot the dummies were in her pocket. They ask again if she remembers checking that round and she says yes. She said Dave was in her ear. She was shaking it, walking it in and putting it in there. Then she said the rounds could have been in her pocket in a spot that they normally aren't. They had a break, and the witness looked over some evidence photos. And the prosecutor asked how many dummy rounds were on top of the prop cart, assuming we got the true story. The gun was unloaded at the prop cart. The witness says three dummies and two live rounds. One dummy had a semi-depressed primer. 
The rest, none of the primers were dented in. On the day of the interview, Hannah had six dummies in her pocket. Five of those had no primer. One, she demonstrated the rattle with the BB in it. If she loaded the gun with dummies and spun the cylinder for Mr. Halls, the only way he would tell by just spinning the cylinder would be if they didn't have those primer caps. None of the dummies on the cart were missing primer caps, but she had five in her pocket without them. The investigator asked Hannah about media statements they've made. Hannah says some of the ones Bob put out were a little crazy. She said in one statement she fought for more training days. They told her it wasn't necessary. They really didn't go deep into that. But then again, this was redacted. So I need to go back and watch the original to see what they're talking about. She was supposed to train Alec that day, but he didn't show. The producers wouldn't let him come. She texted again and asked if he needed more work. The assistant said he did not. After his assistant didn't really respond to Hannah, she said she's not going to push for this big actor to receive training. The investigator says from the first interview, they want to talk about some inconsistencies. She checked the rounds first thing in the morning and didn't take them out after lunch. Hannah said she checked the one that she put in, and the investigator said Hannah told them that four of those had no primer caps and two did. Hannah said she pulled the other one out slightly and looked for the hole. And the investigator says the hole would be at the bottom, so you would need to slide it out a pretty good ways. Hannah said she's pretty sure that hole was midway. The investigator says, I don't know if this came from you or him, talking about the attorney, about this whole someone sabotaging the set. She says her attorney kind of agrees with her on that. And a whole box of what Sarah said were half dummies Half live, she said that doesn't happen. It's super weird that that would be on set. She's asked who she thought would do that. She said, Seth supplies all the boxes, and I was beefing with Seth. He's been acting weird towards me. We had a whole argument and wasn't talking during this incident. She blew up on him in text messages, and Seth gave Sarah things to bring on set. Her attorney says that Sarah was first on set that morning, and that's when Hannah saw the box that same morning on top of all of her stuff. The attorney again says that Sarah got there first, and that's the first time Hannah saw the box. Hannah said, that's why I thought it was weird. It wasn't hunched over on one side considering the whole prop truck had been moved. The prosecution stops the video at trial and asks the witness if at this point, Hannah is insinuating that Sarah planted the box and the witness says yes. She also mentioned she never found any evidence to support that. She's asked to describe the box and Hannah said it just said dummies and it wasn't the font she was used to. The investigator tells Sarah they found the other live rounds on set in various other places, not just in that box. And Hannah says, really? Really? Where were they found? She said so many different areas and they'll get to that. Hannah says, well, that's news to me. Wow. The investigator said they weren't all in the box and asked if she had any speculation on that, and Hannah says no. When asked if she thinks anybody manipulated Alex's gun, she said she wasn't sure and she doesn't want to speculate. The investigator tells Hannah there wasn't a lot of time between when you handed it off, and Hannah said that morning before that, yeah, but I'm not sure. The investigator brings out some papers and asked if she saw anything like this. It's obviously some emails or some safety briefings that pertain to ammo, guns, Hannah said no, it could have gotten lost in her email. The investigator said so they didn't put any protocols out. Hannah says no. The investigator calls out safety bulletins, firearms, ammo, and is like, haven't seen it. She's asked, is that standard on most productions? Hannah said she didn't see those on her last production. They show Hannah a photo of the box on top of that prop cart. Hannah says she doesn't remember that box on top of the cart. The investigator tells the prosecution that the crime scene tech took photos of each of the boxes that Hannah handed to the officer whose body cam we saw that very first day and said that was the box she had been using. The prosecution holds that photo up for the jury to see. She says she thought it just said dummies on it. And then she says, I don't remember this being the one. I thought it was cleaner. This one's dirty. Hannah asked if they found that on the cart. And the investigator says, yes, this is the one that was given to us. This is the one you said you pulled from. She then points to another box on the photo and says, this is the one you said Sarah checked. After looking at the photo, Hannah says Sarah said she found multiple live ones in there. And then she says, just this one? And the investigator said it's suspected. They won't know for sure until it goes to the lab. Hannah says she definitely said there were multiple in there. The investigator flips to the next photo, which is the phone case with the rounds in those boxes. Hannah said it's strange that these ones are missing out of here. And she points to the right side of the picture. 
when I'm pretty sure we only touched these first couple of rounds here. And she points to the opposite side of the phone case. Hannah said maybe one was taken back to the truck or something. She said, I don't know if Sarah went back to the truck with anything. Hannah said she personally did not. She was with Brian the whole time after the shooting. The investigator shows Hannah a photo of the two live rounds and said these two were on top of the car. And the investigator asked if these are the ones that came out of the gun. And Hannah says yes. The investigator says, I don't know if you noticed the commonality between these two lives. And then shows Hannah the photo again of that foam tray with that one suspected live round in there. And Hannah says, the silver? Okay, all right. The investigator asked if that stuck out to her when she loaded the gun. Hannah said, no, it's not the same color. They show another photo. Hannah says, well, what are we looking at here? She says, oh, I thought it was another loading gate. It's a photo of a pistol. And the investigator asked, was this one pulled after lunch? Hannah says, I can't really tell. I'd have to see the bottom of it to know for sure if, if that's Russ's gun. The Marshall guns have two stars on it, and the two Marshall guns were out after lunch. Hannah asked if that's the Rust gun, and the investigator says yes. Again, she said she would need to see the bottom of it. They show a photo of the cart in the prop truck and asked if that's how they normally stored it, and Hannah said yes. They show a photo of the safe. They show a photo of the cart, how they found it on the day of the shooting. Hannah says she doesn't see that box on top of it. The investigator in court back in real time says showing Hannah these photos, she wanted Hannah to identify the items they looked at to confirm those were in fact things she used. The inside of the prop truck was disorganized and she wanted Hannah to confirm that's how they kept it. They also found a firearm outside of the safe, even though they said they kept the guns in the safe. Back to the interview, Hannah's asked where the box came from and she said it was given to them. Sarah brought it. Her attorney asked if she's convinced that that was the box. Hannah says, I don't think it's the box we were pulling from. It seems a little dingy. The investigator said there's suspected live rounds in the box, which you brought me. Hannah kind of stumbles and says, yeah, well, um, those are the ones I brought. I'm not sure Seth has any like that, but a box is a box. You can put different trays in different boxes. The investigator flips through more pictures showing suspected lives from the top of the cart. Photo of another box. It has white tape with handwriting and blue Sharpie. That's from Seth. That's where the one round didn't shake, but ultimately the FBI tested that. In fact, it was a dummy round. That's the only box of dummies, by the way, provided by Seth. She shows Hannah a photo of casings and asks what she knows about the manufacturer of what they receive. She doesn't know where they all came from. They came from Seth. Now, the investigator is showing Hannah, the armorer, how you can identify the different manufacturers by the head stamps. She shows a head stamp for Starline Brass. It has stars on each side, and in between, there's an arc, kind of like a rainbow shape. The investigator said, here's my thing. This company doesn't make live ammo. Hannah says, what the F? That's insane. The prosecution stops the video and asks what her impression was about Starline Brass. At the time of this interview and various other interviews, including the investigator's own research, she found Starline Brass doesn't make live ammo. They just sell the casing. Her understanding was it was just reload rounds. One day while at the DA's office, she happened to look down at her own ammo and the casing was Starline Brass. So back to the interview, Hannah says, so what are you saying? That should have never been able to fire? Her attorney says, so someone had to convert it or it was a dummy that went haywire, I guess. But most likely, somebody converted that to a live round. Hannah said she's seen Starline before they were on the last set she worked on. Hannah asked if they found any gunpowder residue on the Starline. The investigator said it takes time. Hannah asked if they have any idea how long the labs are going to take, and her attorney says it's going to be a while. He tells her, just for an example, the state may take two years. Hannah says, oh my God. Her attorney says the FBI won't take that long. And Hannah says, I'm thinking I can't do this for two years. Hannah says with the number of lives in here, meaning in the photos, what Sarah told me, I kind of think there's another box. The investigator goes through all of the live ammo that was found on set. There was one in Alex Gunn, obviously. One in the box. She told them that's the box she was pulling the rounds from. There were two on the cart. There was also one on the bandolier on the top of the cart one in Alex Bandelier, and then one that they were unsure of. All the lives had the Starline tops. Hannah says she tries to keep the ones with primer caps and no primer caps separate. And the investigator asked, why would there be live ammo on the set? Hannah said at this point, I think maybe they were mixed in. She's asked if she ever did gun practice on set. Hannah says never. 
The investigator says, you wouldn't suspect anyone would tell me you were out there. Hannah says, I don't know why people would say that. I 100% was not. Someone would have pictures because people would be stoked about going out and shooting. They ask her if there's a chance her DNA would be on any of this stuff. And she said, I moved the ammo around. I did open the box. The investigator points to one and Hannah says, yes, one box. The other, she doesn't remember that box. She said, I thought it said dummies on it. They asked where the shotgun went, and she said it should be on the bottom of the cart unless Sarah moved it. Hannah said she was with Brian the whole time after the shooting. Then Hannah says she's kind of freaking out right now. The prosecution asked the witness, if Hannah told her earlier that she saw Sarah take things to the prop truck. The witness says yes. Earlier in this very interview, she said she saw Sarah collecting the guns. They go back to the interview very briefly. Hannah says that Sarah was gone for about 10 or 15 minutes before the police showed up on scene. The interview ends. The prosecution shows a photo of four casings and asks why are they noteworthy. Well, they contain the same head stamp and color as the live rounds found on Rust. They're spent casings. They were sent to the FBI for fingerprint testing. They couldn't get prints off of those. Now get this. They ended very strong on direct. The prosecutor tells the witness, Hannah said she brought two boxes of dummies on set. How many do you have in evidence? The witness says one. Prosecutor asks what happened to the other box. The witness, I don't know. Hannah was not found to be doing target practice, by the way. And also no evidence Seth or Sarah were the source of the live rounds on the set. So that would leave Hannah. And it's circumstantial, but the totality of it, the box Hannah identified in the interview was what hers looked like. The one on her phone that she showed investigators during her first interview matched exactly what they had. She handed that box to the officer saying she was pulling from that box. The bandoliers with the live ammo she identifies as bringing from her previous set. The other box of dummies, the one Seth brought, didn't match. All of that is what they used in their investigation. In Hannah's interview, she said she was the one that loaded Alex's gun. And that was it. So, you see there at the end, they put it in a nice little bow when your lead investigator gets on the stand. Now, tomorrow we'll go through Cross with her. I haven't heard how it goes. I'm going to go watch it when I go to sleep tonight. And then we'll do that last interview and then pick back up. So, I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.